Around six months back, Adobe shook up the editing world with some game-changing tools. The handy remove tool and the revolutionary generative fill. Fast forward to today and Luminar Neo, one of Photoshop's biggest rivals, has just launched their own versions of these generative AI tools, Gen Erase and Gen Swap. In this video, I'm going to put these two major editing applications against each other. I'll be running the same image through both Photoshop and Luminar Neo. So by the end, you'll know which one is the best. Let's kick things off with Jenny Race in Luminar Neo. We're going to compare it to Photoshop's Remove tool. Both of them use complex AI algorithms to generate new pixels and magically remove anything from a photo. In this first photo, I want to remove this boat in the background here, so we get a cleaner image focusing just on the guy here. So I'm going to select Gen Erase here in the catalog section of Luminar Neo. The software will quickly analyze the image and I can then brush over the section of the photo which I want to erase. And then I can click Erase at the bottom here. Now Luminar Neo should scan this image and then generate it with something to replace this boat as if it was never there. Let's see how it does. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the before and after. Yep, that's a pretty nice result. Now I'll do the same thing in Photoshop using Photoshop's remove tool right here. Again, I'm going to paint over the area of the photo that I want to remove. And once I let go of the mouse, Photoshop will automatically remove that area. Hmm, okay, that didn't do as good of a job as I expected. Let's just have a look at the before and after. Yeah, it's created some weird artifacts here and here. So Luminar Neo definitely takes that first point here. In this next photo, I want to erase a few things like this log here and this sign on the left. So again, in Luminar Neo, I'll go into Gen Erase and I'll paint over the things I want to get rid of and then hit Erase. At first glance, it looks like Luminar did a pretty good job, but if I zoom in a bit towards this area where the log was, you can tell it looks a little bit weird and almost pixelated. Now there is a reason for that and also a workaround, because Luminar Neo actually generates a completely new set of pixels within that selection. And the maximum resolution of those generated pixels is 1536 by 1536. And because I selected both the log and the sign in one action, Luminar calculates over this entire area, which is of course much larger than this 1536 pixels by 1536. In case you're wondering, Photoshop also has a similar limit limitation when using generative fill. Only with Photoshop, the maximum resolution is even smaller. In Photoshop, it's 1024 by 1024 pixels. So that's quite a bit lower resolution than Luminar Neo. A better way to remove multiple items with Luminar Neo Gen Erase is by first selecting the log and then hitting Erase. And then reset the selection with this button here. And now select the sign on the left and then hit Erase again. If I now zoom into that same area where the log was, you can see that now everything looks perfectly fine. All right, so let's find out if this is also the case with Photoshop's Remove tool. With the Remove tool selected, I'm going to make sure to untick this box here where it says Remove after each stroke. That's going to allow me to remove both these objects in one go. So I'll brush over the log first and then brush over the sign. Then I have to click this Apply button right here. And Photoshop has done a very nice job at removing both of these objects. Let's just zoom in towards the area of the log. And this looks absolutely fine. There are no stretched pixels or anything weird looking like that. So even though we can achieve the same result in both Luminar and Photoshop, this point does go to Photoshop because of the workaround needed in Luminar. Next, I'll remove this lens flare with Jenny Race in Luminar. And this is the type of stuff for which I think these tools are amazing. So before and after, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's zoom in before and after. Yep, nice, I'm pretty happy with that. Now the same thing with Photoshop's remove tool. I'm just gonna paint over this area again. And well, that hasn't really removed this upper part of the lens flare here. It kind of generated something weird. So not the best result, to be honest. A point for Luminar. By the way, if you're interested in getting these new Luminar Neo tools, there are actually two ways of getting them. Either by having a Luminar Neo subscription, and that will automatically give you access to all of these AI tools. 
Or if you've purchased Luminar Neo, you can add the Creative Journey Pack, which allows you access to all of these tools as well. Either way, you'll find a link in the video description with a discount code of whatever is the best deal at the moment, whether it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or anything else. All right, let's continue experimenting with these tools because things might get a little bit more complicated when trying to remove objects that take up much more space in the image. In this photo, I don't really like all these cars that are parked on the street here. I think it would look a lot nicer if the street were empty. So let's try it in Photoshop first. I'll just paint over the cars like so. Hmm, okay, well, this is pretty much useless. What do you think Gen Erase in Luminar Neo is capable of doing with this photo? Again, I'm going to select all the cars at once and then click Erase. Whoa, what the heck? Wait, let's just have a look at the before and after. It even created spots of light on the street and everything. That's pretty impressive. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, yeah, there is a bit of an issue with the resolution limitation, but I think if you're using this for online purposes like social media, you probably wouldn't even notice it and you wouldn't have a problem. So I think it's fair that this point goes to Luminar Neo. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Wouldn't Photoshop easily remove these cars using generative fill? Well, let's find out and compare it to Luminar Neo's Gen Swap. With the lasso tool, I'm just going to make a selection of the cars and I'm going to leave the prompt box empty and then hit generate. Let's have a look through the options. Yeah, I think this one looks very nice. I'll zoom in a bit to have a closer look. Yeah, even at 100%, I think this looks really great. I'm curious to see what Luminar Neo's Gen Swap comes up with because it did a pretty good job with Gen Erase, so maybe Gen Swap does it even better. I'll select the cars by painting over them. And also here, I'll leave the prompt box empty and then hit swap. Okay, well, it looks fine, but I have to say that I prefer the options that were given to me by Photoshop. Let's just also zoom in a bit here to see if there is a difference. And at 100%, you can also tell that there is something that is a bit off. So I'm just going to have to give this point to Photoshop. Let's try a fun one here. And this, I think, is a bit more complicated. I'm going to try to remove this person's beard. So in Luminar's Gen Swap, I'll paint over the beard. And I'm leaving the prompt box empty and then hit swap. And we'll experiment with some images where I add a prompt after this one. Let's have a look at the result. Holy heck, that is really, really good. Look, that just looks so real. That's a very nice result. Now, what is Photoshop's generative fill going to come up with here? I've already had some pretty weird results trying to generate human elements like hands or eyes. So I'm pretty curious what it's going to come up with here. Okay, let's go through these options. These are also not bad. I like them, but I personally think the Luminar Neo one just looked a touch more realistic. I'll put them up side by side and I think it's a very close call, but my preference goes to Luminar here. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you disagree. All right, let's do an easy one now. I just want to compare the quality or realism that both of these can deliver. I'm going to replace this globe with a house plant in a red pot. Let's compare Luminar's version versus Photoshop's version. And both of them are extremely good, but if we are being picky, I asked for a house plant in a red pot, and that is exactly what Luminar gave me, whereas Photoshop in all three variations added some other things. And these two aren't even really red pots, so I'm gonna have to be strict and give this point to Luminar. Here's another fun one. Let's turn this tree into one that is blooming using Gen Swap. Let's make a selection like we've done before and then enter blooming tree. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Let's have a look at the before and after. Nice. Now Photoshop, same thing. I'm going to make a selection and then enter the prompt blooming tree. Let's have a look through the options here. Well, it's interesting that Photoshop has only generated trees with white blossoms. Anyway, I think the quality of what Luminar and Photoshop generated is pretty much equal, but I think the Luminar tree fits the original tree better than the one Photoshop generated. So for that reason, I'm going to give the point to Luminar. Moving on, let's try adding something to an image. Let's add some sunglasses to this person's face. And this is what Luminar did, which is funny for sure, but not really usable, I guess. And this is what Photoshop did. So no points here, sorry, both of these are just pretty terrible. Okay, final test image, and then let's talk about some important pros and cons about Luminar and Photoshop. Let's change the street here at the bottom of the photo and turn it into a nice reflective lake. 
and Photoshop delivers some very nice results here. I'll zoom into about 100%. And you can see it's not fully sharp, so Photoshop struggles a bit with the resolution. How is Luminar Gen Swap going to handle this? I'm just going to brush over the bottom of the frame and then enter Reflective Lake in the prompt box and hit Swap. And this one also looks very nice, I think. Let's have a look at the before and after. And let's also zoom in a bit to see about the resolution. Now you can tell it's not 100% optimal, but it looks pretty good, I have to say. And it's sharper than what Photoshop generated at least. So the final point goes to Luminar Neo. And looking at the final scoreboard, quite a few of the results created by Luminar Neo's AI tools were surprisingly better than those created by Photoshop. But there is a catch. The biggest pro that Luminar has compared to Photoshop when it comes to generative AI, so generative fill compared to gen swap, is the higher maximum resolution of 1500 36 pixels in comparison to 1024 pixels and it is noticeable in some images but there are quite a few things that make Photoshop a lot easier to work with at least for now. All the Photoshop tools are there at your disposal and you can access them in one single workflow. In Luminar Neo, Gen Swap and Gen Erase are separate tools and after you use them you have to save the image and then continue working with that new file if you want to do any other adjustments. The obvious biggest pro that Photoshop Generative Fill has is that it gives you three options every time. Gen Swap only gives you one. Again, this is the case for now. And making selections is also a lot easier in Photoshop with features like select subject or select background. I am hoping that Luminar Neo will also implement this soon because they have this type of auto selection technology in their software already. So it would be kind of silly if they didn't. Lastly, Photoshop is also quite a bit faster at generating images and this probably has to do with the cloud capacity of Adobe compared to that of Skylum. So again, who knows how this will change in the future. And that is the biggest defense for Luminar Neo. Generase and GenSwap have only just been released, whereas Adobe's tools have been released nearly half a year ago. And we all know that these AI tools learn and collect data from their users and improve over time. So it will be interesting to see how Luminar Neo's AI tools evolve. I personally think that they are a strong alternative to Photoshop, especially with all the incredibly powerful AI tools Luminar Neo already has built in. Anyway, to check out Luminar Neo and its new AI tools, make sure you hit the link in the video description and use the discount code to save some money. And if you want to find out more about the editing power of Luminar Neo, make sure you check out this video right here, where I explore some of the other AI tools that Luminar Neo has to offer. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!